Potting without a flow bench, can it be done? Let's talk about it. All right guys, welcome back to another Baines Basic. This is a question we get a ton, like all the time. Can I port without a flow bench? Especially if some of the new guys that have come in that haven't followed some of our porting series. If you haven't, jump on them. That's what all that's about. Uh, and with the Einstein series and everything, that's what we're teaching people, how to master porting before you even get onto a flow bench. Time and time again, you'll hear from any cylinder head guy about how a flow bench really, I don't want to say wasted their time, but really diverted their attention from the most important factors. And if you followed me for long enough, you'll know exactly what that is, CSA. CSA dictates everything. So the, the short answer is you 100% can port without a flow bench. Um, I, I do it most of the time now. Like I, I very rarely use a flow bench at all now because I rely on the math and I rely on the CSA. And I've taught a ton of guys how to port without a flow bench just using basic CSA principles. And it's all about balancing that cross-sectional area. Again, even without changing major shape in the port. If you're doing port development, you have to actually test the shape. Then you have to probe and, and, and start playing around and that gets far more technical. But if you've got a port where the window's set and the throat is set and just doing basic pocket port and tidying up, you cannot go wrong using the CSA method. This is what I've drilled down on all my series from 2Js to RBs to 1UZs to Hondas to everything. If you follow this principle, you cannot lose. You're only going to develop more port energy and that head is only going to look better on the flow bench as well as support the math, to support the CSA, right? Good, good balance. So and it really should be common sense once you start getting into it. If our CSA does this, then obviously our airspeed is going to go fast, slow, fast, slow. That's the last thing we want when we're trying to create an inertia train, meaning we're trying to create something that accelerates to the valve or if the minimal cross-sectional area is at the window, something accelerates and decelerates as smooth as possible so we don't get molecular collision, we don't start pulling air apart because remember this isn't steady state like the flow bench, it is an on-off switch. It's open, close, open, close, open, close. So we have air waves going up and down, we have um, pressure pulses going up and down, and we have velocity starting from zero, accelerating and back down again. So we have to make that process as stable as possible. So there's some really, really simple rules when it comes to porting and, and shaping, and that's doing the obvious, the cross-sectional area. So if we've got a port that comes in and next down, you'll see the casting's got a horrible bump in it. If we just tidy that line up to the seat and correct that CSA rather than going big, small, big again, so it just continues into the seat, we tidy the short turn up, we're not changing the shape of the port. All we're doing is correcting the casting area er, errors. And that alone is worth anywhere from 20 to 30 CFM, depending on the size of the port. Easy. It's easy horsepower with very, very little knowledge, as long as we fo focus on this. As long as we're not porting into the seat angles, right? As long as we're not opening the bowl up. The bowl is already set. All we're doing is tidying this up. Whether this is a two valve or four valve, it doesn't really matter. Yes, if the head's a little small, we can put some more bowl volume in a two valve, right? But again, I'm just talking very, very basics because we get a heap of people asking that want to try porting. And, and as I've said from the start, if you can learn to map the cross-sectional area, focus on the CSA, the CSA won't lie to you. It'll show that it dips in and dips out. So all we're going to do is complete that transition properly into it. Tidy the short turn up ever so slightly, and, and it's a win, win, win. Uh, same as the twin cams. When we're looking at that transition from single entry to uh, two entries, so the two valves, and we have a really, really wide divider, and we have a massive change in cross-sectional area. So the area can be here, it'll drop down, which means the air has to accelerate much faster over a really, really small transitional distance, basically right before the, the divider 
and right after, there's a dramatic change in cross-sectional error. And you can probe this if you do flow bench work. You'll see the difference. Uh, it can be 100 feet per second. It can be massive on some cylinder heads. Um, so by, by blending that and knife edging it and porting into the divided area where the red line is and making that transition of cross-sectional area much smoother, we get a far more stable velocity gradient, which means we have more mass for the same velocity because that's the other aspect that people miss. You can, even though we get a reduction in, in density with velocity, because it's a on off system and not constant velocity, how you accelerate the air will dictate how much mass is there. Meaning if we accelerate the air much faster over a shorter distance, even if that's at 300 feet per second on both ports and one does it slower and one does it faster, the port that does it faster will have less density, period. You, you can't beat physics and, and that's it. And the other aspect is simple stuff like windows. If we have a, um, like we showed in the Edelbrock series where we have a CNC'd window and these horrible casting lips, just taking those lips down, tidying them up, not going crazy, not opening it up, not gasket matching because the gasket manufacturer, especially in uh, the four valve game, they don't know what RPM and cross-sectional area you need. So do not gasket match. If you're doing a specific small block chev or something like that where you buy a 1275 and you know the cross-sectional area of the window of the gasket matches your combination, then yes, yeah, sure, go ahead. But don't ever just match port and assume the hole in the gasket is the right size for your combination because 90% of the time it isn't even close. So look at that. Um, and the other aspect is really, really simple, like we did with the bowl where we would fix this lip and, and make a better transition. Same with the guide. There's a lot of wasted area, wasted horsepower around the guide, and we can just shape that up from a bluff body into a streamlined body around the guide. Don't go too close to the guide because they can crack, especially if you don't have bronze guides in them. Leave, I, I usually leave about 40 thou a mil. But taper it like a shark fin. It's going to flow a lot better. You're not going to have a dead area and eddies behind the guide anymore, so you're going to improve the port and you're going to pick up CFM if you if you put it on the flow bench. But these are basic, basic principles that you can do. And again, even if we measured that CSA, you would see by us taking this mass out, it's not doing this anymore. We're not getting a tight area because that will create extra mass in that port that's creating velocity through here and then colliding with each other behind it. We're taking all that out. So not only are we stopping that extra molecular collision behind it, but we're balancing the velocity of the bowl around the guide by reducing that area and shaping it properly. And that's what you see in any good uh, race cylinder head today in, in, in the two valve game. So yes, you can port without a flow bench if you follow our CSA rule. Um, and I do suggest that you learn cross-sectional area way before you ever get on a flow bench. We're all super, super keen and we all grab a flow bench and start porting and, and doing stuff and um, realize that while the flow bench is a good tool, it, it, it shouldn't be taken as gospel and it will and can lead you up the garden path as it has led me and every successful cylinder head guy out there. And if they say it hasn't, they're lying. <laughs> but map it, do the CSA, see where your minimal cross-sectional area is and that'll tell you everything about the port. And we did that with the Audi series. We've done it with every series that we've done and we're going to continue to do it for more and more different cylinder heads to show you how consistent the maths and the cross-sectional area um, um, math or whatever you want to call it is. Uh, because the CSA is what dictates airspeed, okay? Um, we, we can't change the pump, but we change the cross-sectional area to match the RPM we need, right? As we increase RPM, we need a bigger port. We've got to get the airspeed back in because we know the airspeed limit, right? We know the Mach limit. 0.55 to 0.6, roughly, depending on the port shape and stuff like that. So if we know the limit, like compression, like anything, we want to get as close as we can to that line of pain but not trip over it, then we know the instant we increase 
the capacity or RPM, we have to increase that cross-sectional area evenly. And, and, and the better we do it, and the, the more gentle the cross-sectional area change, the more mass we will retain, the more mass we retain, the more fuel we can get in, the bigger the bang, the more torque, win, win, win. All right, hopefully that clears it up, guys, because I did have that as a comment too, and I wanted to cover it. See you in the next one.